Well, I would say that, you know, he's, he's a, he's a capitalist. He's a market capitalist, really, you know, and he's been trained by the country and the culture to go out and seize opportunity with his native genius, whatever the case may be. And so he invents, he erects, he conceptualizes, he uh, doodles on napkins, the great empires that he's gonna found. And he tries to capture market share and he tries to enrich himself and his compatriots along the way. And none of those schemes and devices work out terribly well. And so he's left on the day that he receives a cancer diagnosis with a, a string of failed enterprises that question his purpose in life. And uh, from there, he's got to seek out a second act if a second act is available to him. If I'm sitting down and I have an inclination to say some things that will make the reader aghast or really convey some kind of humorous aspect to Charlie's character, it will be in the direction of farce. If it's, if it's gonna be sort of on the comedic end of things. And that is, it's vital for the book structure, for the overall arc of the thing that he's presented in the beginning as a kind of comedic outlet or even for certain ex-wives of his as a punchline. Um, because I think it's very easy for us in general in life to approach a person without knowing that person and walk away with a kind of parody or superficial take that um, is easily rendered a punchline. It is only through, I think, spending time with that person through trying to unearth the deeper urges and, and uh, you know, uh, parts of his or her character that we come at something that's non-farcical. Um, and I suppose that what's really matters to me while I'm doing the things that, that are humorous, that come, they don't come easy to me, but they are an inclination that I have, an impulse that I have, is to remember his humanity. That's the hardest thing. So that it's grounded, so that it's, it's moored by something more than just a comic situation, or even if, it's, if it tends toward the bleak or the, the more uh, blacker comedy. Uh, that we remember that this guy is always there being a real human being, even if it's in the background, even if it sneaks up on you, it may even be better that way, because then he starts to emerge as somebody genuinely worth your time and attention, and not just as a series or a situational comedy. So when I'm thinking about what am I going to name this guy, I'm not going to name him Joshua Ferris, because that seems to be too true. And it's actually, as I came to think of it, a form of dishonesty. I was gonna name him a famous character in literature to overlay it all, to overlay the entire story with an element of fictionality so that you understood that as far as I'm concerned as the writer of this book, it's all fiction, no matter how convinced you are of its truth. Is it okay if I, if I say both? I mean, it was a total pain in the ass. It was such a pain in the ass, but it was so much fun too, right? I mean, because it was, it was everything that I wanted to do. Uh, it, was, it was everything that I had taught myself to do in previous books. It was more ambitious uh, structurally and, and thematically than any of the other books. Um, its prose style was determined to be very, very sort of high, you know, stylized. Um, it was all of these things, and so it took so long. In addition to which, as I started, we, as we started talking at first, it, I was grieving to begin. You know, I mean, I my dad died in 2014. I was kind of trying to figure out how to memorialize him. A lot of it was was um, writing that was almost just automatic, grief stricken. Um, it wasn't going to amount to a final product. It was just it was all process. It wasn't meant to be. A finished thing. So I had to get through that. And then the ambitions started to pile up and I had to deal with them. To what extent did I want to pursue them? To what extent did I want to shelve them? To what extent did I want to at least, you know, narrow it down to something approachable? But every time I would try to quit or go in a different direction, I would just wake up in the morning and go right back at it because I, in part, because I was so enthralled with the project, I was so interested in it. So it was always a great pleasure while always being a perfect pain in the ass.